I'm sorry for the noise. That's uh, the drifting school right over there. So we have to film uh, nearby. It. So never mind the noise. Welcome to another episode of Bay 718 Cayman Story here on Forever Manual. I want to share a very special moment with you today. Uh, we are currently aware of only four uh, two-liter Caymans with manual transmission sold in Russia since 2017. Exactly half of them standing today in front of you. What's more, this car in GT Silver is equipped with both sport chrono package and adaptive suspension. That's quite rare for the standard car. Mine doesn't have any of that. In this episode, we'll be comparing these cars side by side and hopefully we'll find out how these options affect the character of standard 2-liter Cayman with manual transmission, if they do at all. Today, I'll be deliberately paying more attention to daily driving without focusing on slaloms or lap timing. I mean, yes, I've booked the small circuit on the outskirts of Moscow, but you don't buy 2-liter Caymans you know, for setting track records. Tires, exactly the same size, same model, Pirelli P0 is OEM tires, uh, same pressure, so it's perfect for right comfort comparison. So we start with an assumption that these two options are not mandatory for the car that uh, visits track occasionally. Unlike PDK cars, where Sport Chrono is essential simply to extract all of the available performance. For those of you who just get familiar with the Porsche stuff, what is the Sport Chrono? It's a combination of software and hardware tweaks which enhance the performance. In my car, for instance, uh, here on the central console, there is a Sport button. In a Sport Chrono equipped car, the mode selection is operated via rotary switch. Italians call them manitinos. There are some additional pages in the trip computer menu, like a stopwatch and a G-force meter. Then there is a clock. For many people, it's a deal breaker. It's much prettier than the one in 911 of the 992 series these days. I will give it that. But even when it comes to this beautiful timepiece, if I had a car with a Sport Chrono package, I would get these removed. And the Porsche Extra Suspension Management, or PASM, is just a name for adaptive dampers. There are electronically controlled valves inside of the shock absorbers, so the PASM adjusts the damping according to the signals coming from its own ECU. It also utilizes shorter springs, leading to a 10 mm drop in ground clearance. It is believed that the PASM car in normal mode is slightly more comfortable than the standard car, and slightly stiffer in the sport mode. And this stuff does work, but in a little bit unexpected manner. To tell you more, I have to get behind the wheel. By the time we speak, the second car has already gone home. It lives in a different part of Russia. The video production isn't linear, so I'll be showing you what we were filming during two weekends while my friend Sergei was visiting Moscow. We had great fun driving our cars side by side. Unfortunately, he had to depart right after the piece at the racetrack was done, before I had any chance to film myself inside of his Cayman. But don't worry, despite talking to you from behind the wheel of just one car, I'll be sharing my conclusions based on driving them both. As my friend pointed out, none of our Caymans is less attractive than the other. They are both appealing in their own way. The line between them is very thin though, but since you are already in the business of buying Porsche, you have to embrace the fact that small things matter. Small things lead to great changes. That's the whole business of Porsche engineering. For example, the first thing you notice in the silver car is the heavier steering. Both cars have the optional power steering plus, yet the force you are dealing with turning that standard larger wheel is greater. In combination with a smoother ride, it creates a more expansive and sophisticated feel. That's not always a good thing, though. Sometimes the silver car feels more remote than mine, which has a busier ride, but lighter and more communicative steering. My friend's Cayman also feels like a heavier car, which it is. As I told you in one of the previous episodes here, the Cayman is a very tight system, so small changes matter. A few extra kilos don't go unnoticed. But the options we are discussing are not the main reason for the weight gain. It's mostly due to things like 18-way seats, for example, or the Bose sound system, which requires an additional amplifier. It also relies on more wires to harvest the signals from the front parking sensors, which my car doesn't have. My Cayman, on the other hand, feels lighter and leaner, 
maybe a little cheaper as well, a little bouncier. But the whole experience isn't so bad to make me want to sacrifice the steering feel for that extra bit of comfort. And when you hit a piece of bad road, the difference in ride comfort becomes totally insignificant. To my surprise, both cars are equally stiff there, even though the silver car is in the normal mode. The advantage of PASM is that it makes the ride slightly more composed. Actually, the faster you go, the more comfortable the PASM becomes. And then some extra weight on the steering wheel does make sense. If you'd leave it as light as in my car, you might feel a little disconnected. My Cayman provides me with such detailed information about the road surface that I always stay alert. Is the PASM suspension worth the money? I'd say yes, if you don't care about ground clearance. It makes any long distance drive more pleasant. And it also adds versatility as we hit the track later. But we'll come to that in a moment. Let's talk about Sport Chrono first. The rotary switch has four positions. Normal, Sport, Sport Plus and Individual. So the greatest mystery, how many engine modes are there? Do you get an extra throttle mapping with the Sport Chrono package? No, you don't. There are two basic programs in each car. Sluggish normal and reasonably responsive Sport. The Sport Plus is a freaking joke. It adds nothing to the experience. I mean, what it does, it puts the suspension into its firmest setting automatically. But at the same time, it brings the throttle response back down to the normal mode. Why? Why would you do that? I mean, by the definition of Sport Plus, you expect it to be sportier than just sport, yes? But it isn't. I mean, it's one of these go figure things. Please let me know in the comments below if you are aware why it's like that. To me, it looks like nothing but the legacy of the PDK-oriented design. I mean, it's, it's, it's obvious what the Sport Plus does to the PDK car. This is the most aggressive setting for the gearbox. But here, this position of the Sport Plus just left blank. And then the rev matching. Okay, it does help you with downshifts if you don't know how to rev match yourself. But then, as soon as Sport mode is on, the auto bleeping cannot be deactivated. And then if you do know how to heal and tow, you find yourself kind of competing against the system. It doesn't get on my nerves, but does make me feel like I'm being watched. It makes me question if there is a reason why the rev matching function is activated via a dedicated button in serious machines, like a GT4, for example. And then, correct me if I'm wrong, but in my opinion, the whole point of rev matching is to get your engine's RPMs right at the very moment of engaging the gear, yeah? Last time I came across the system, it was a 991 Speedster with a new GT3 engine, and it was virtually impossible to make a mistake there. The speed of the gearbox shaft was constantly monitored, and the needle of the rev counter just stood up until the gear was engaged. The Cayman doesn't do that. It loses track of uh, the gearbox shaft rotation rather quickly, and if you've lost that precious second in which gear should be engaged, then revs drop and you end up overloading the clutch. I understand that the auto bleeping allows you to make fewer mistakes, but thank you very much. I'll be just fine on my own. And you know what? The clutch in the silver car is unmistakably heavier. It's uh, like almost 911 heavy. And it has uh, the firmer gear engagement action too. I have no idea if it has anything to do with the way the Sport Chrono equipped cars are being set. Or maybe it's just the individual quality of a particular car. We have around the same mileage. However, Sergei's car doesn't do anything close to mine in terms of fighting the city traffic. But I don't recall mine to be different from its current state when it was new. I wonder if it's related to the Sport Chrono's secret ingredient, dynamic engine mounts. This hidden component of the Sport Chrono package affects the car most, in my opinion. Being electronically controlled, those engine mounts change the stiffness according to the load and to the driving mode you're in. I can't say it adds much to the comfort, but it makes the response of the turbo engine a little less inert. The throttle response here is not very sharp in general, uh, but let's say if you are up to 4000 RPM, where it is at its best, and you start to modulate the throttle there, 
no need to be super sensitive to notice the difference between these two cars. Altogether with PASM, the Sport Chrono definitely benefits the precision of how you control the dynamic load distribution, which is crucial for the handling of any mid-engine car. That's why I would recommend you to go for both PASM and Sport Chrono if you are a regular at the track days or rally sprints. The silver car rolls less, the center of gravity is lower. All of this affects the experience. When it's time to go, you don't realize how things work separately. You just find yourself going quicker in the silver car and more sideways because shorter suspension travel means that the car loses grip more suddenly after hitting a high curb. My Cayman struggles a bit with finding front grip, although it compensates the lack of responsiveness with having less weight to move about. We switched cars and at the end of the day we found them both appealing but in different ways. The silver car with its heavier steering and clutch with a classy ride feels more matured. The base car is younger and happier <laughs> in a dog's way. I hope to tell you more about it in details in future episodes, so please consider subscribing to the channel and hit the bell to get notified when something pops up. So I ended up asking my friend, who has never had a chance to experience the base version of the Cayman like mine, how it changed his perception of the car that he actually bought. I was wondering if he changed anything to his spec if given a chance to come back in time. He loves his clock, so the Sport Chrono stays, loves the suspension, and I agree with him, although he didn't expect the margin to be that insignificant. I also have to say that modifying your Porsche is more difficult if the car is specced with many electronically controlled components that are tightly linked together. But for example, his top spec seats for double the price of mine, what a waste of money. And after driving my car with the engine sound activator turned off, Sergei decided to pull the fuse out as well, voting for more natural sound. While interviewing him about the way he specced his car, I learned some interesting things. My friend not only had no chance to fit into a proper seat, he couldn't even had a test drive before buying his Cayman. First of all, let's give him credit for buying a very unpopular version in a rare spec which made this video possible, yeah? And then check this out. Even if he found his way into the display car, I bet it would be irrelevant one. Something with PDK and long list of options. And to be honest, I never saw it this way, but the unavailability of the base models on display forces people to buy more expensive stuff. Great for business, not necessarily so for the customer or for the car culture. Because the effort that has been put into the development of the standard car, an incredible effort, I dare to say, stays unappreciated if nobody buys it, doesn't it? Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.